Hello everybody, welcome to the round 11 preview. Carlton and the West Coast Eagles. And uh, I've got to say, there's a bit, I've kind of got a similar vibe to this game to the one I had before the Geelong game. You know, just, you know, the, the away game against these really good sides. And obviously the Geelong, the Geelong game ended up being probably one of the best experiences of the year, if not the best, and the best result that we've had against a really quality side. But Different here with the Eagles. I'm very wary of them. Um, they're coming off a couple of weeks. They're back at home, obviously, um, out of the Queensland hub and back into their, their home state. They clearly play their best football there. Um, and, you know, they've had a couple of weeks where they've played some pretty good footy. Uh, they beat Collingwood pretty well, even though, you know, Collingwood were, were very poor that day and couldn't get anything going. And then last week, they um, they did a really good job against Geelong. Uh, probably that, that third quarter is really what set them up. And, you know, I, for us, the story for us, it's it's about a response. You know, it was a very poor showing against the Hawthorne Footy Club, and and one thing we have been able to do this year is is respond after those kind of games, and, and that's where I have a bit of confidence that we'll be able to put up a fight. Um, but ultimately, there is that angst. You know, it's the Eagles and a highly respected team, and it's it's funny how early in the season they've probably done it for the last few years. They've not started very well, dropped a few games, and then you know the, the media sort of jump off them. And then at the end of the day, once they get those home games, uh, they they perform well. And you know it's one of those teams that you look at them on paper, all those great names, particularly when you talk about their midfield and the addition of Tim Kelly, and you know they've got that GWS feel to them where the big names are there. And at the end of the day, once the ball bounces, they're just men, and it's it's one on one, it's it's individual battles, it's 50-50 contests. So. I don't want to completely write us off, but there are some some signs for me that are a little bit worrying. Um, if you look at last year, we we played them late in the season. Uh, I believe it was round 21 or round 20, actually. And we actually didn't do a, a bad job against them. Uh, if you remember, Nick Newman kicked four goals and um, we were up at quarter time, I believe. Sam Walsh kicks that mega goal in the first quarter. And, and from there, the professionalism just took over. And that's probably something that I feel will be the case this week. I believe that West Coast will have that ultimate confidence to have the, the mental edge that no matter what we are dishing up to the Eagles, they'll always believe that they're going to win this game and win comfortably and have that ability. So I, I don't know if we have that ultimate superior confidence that we can beat them this week. And maybe that's just coming from me and, and not from the players, but that's just there's a different vibe to it this week, and, and maybe I'm still hurting from the the Hawthorne loss. But there is a, this is a game where it's a really tough opponent, and you've got to respect them. And you know, I do expect them to be in the top four at the end of the year, if not the top two. So they're going to get a nice run of games in Perth, it would seem. And I, I think they're they're primed. Um, yeah, we, you know, the the big thing. There's a few things I'm looking for this week. I, I'm going to be looking directly at our our senior players this week for sure. I mean. Murphy, Jones, Cripps, Doherty, Simpson. I'm going to be looking at them very closely this week because when West Coast get on their run, and there's no doubt there are going to be momentum swings in this game, and the Eagles will have their momentum swing, um, I'm really going to be looking at, did our leaders do a better job than what they did last week when 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 things didn't go our way? And, and that's the key for me this week. Um, we know that Dave Cunningham's going to miss we know that he's he's hurt his calf. He pulled up tight, so that came out today in the injury report. McGovern is going to be a test, so there's a little bit of that, and it brings up a bit of a selection issue now because there's so many variables here. I mean, for me personally, I want to see Zach Fisher in this side. If if Cunningham's out, I really think this is the time to bring Fisher in. He's he's come off the syndesmosis injury. He's had three weeks. I think it's I think it's entering the fourth week now, uh, where he's been back from injury, playing in these reserve games. And so I, I think, you know, at some point he's got to be in because, we, you know, Teague spoke in a press conference a few weeks ago about how we believe that he's part of our future. And I mean, I do too. I think he's in our best 22. And and so I'm really looking forward to seeing him come back into the side. And um, I, I, I personally believe Callum Moore will come out, whether or not Mitch plays or not. I, I just, I've seen two games. I just haven't seen enough impact for him to suggest that, you know, if he comes up against this this defense with Jeremy McGovern and, and Shannon Hearn and the like back there and, and Barras, uh, I, I just don't believe he's going to be able to provide us with, with enough. Um, and so for, for this week, I'm looking at Fish. I'm looking at Tom DeConning. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm even, you know, tempted to throw in, you know, Josh Honey as a name in there as well. But I think with, with Tom DeConning, you know, we're coming up against Nick Nat, who is, 
he, it's funny, people call him overrated. I think he's an absolute superstar. Um, great, he's just a great human being first and foremost, but as a player, he's really starting to hit some straps. And I spoke to a friend of mine who was at the West, the, the game last week. Uh, he actually went to the West Coast game, Dane, and he was saying that Nick Nat was covering the ground really well, and <laughs> that's not a good confidence boost for me at all. So if he's fit and firing, um, you know, we know his, his leaping ability, we know his strength, so I believe we have to go into this game and with a specific strategy to play against him. I don't believe it's it's Pitonet and, you know, a chop out from Levi or Callum Moore, I believe, in this situation. This is the time to play Tom DeConning. Um, I wouldn't want to play Tom solely with Nick Nat, but I think this is a great opportunity to get him some experience against Nick Nat, um, who is a very athletic ruckman. I think Tom's strength is his athleticism, which is probably what Pitonet isn't. Pitonet's more of a, um, a crash and bash, you know, physical type Ruckman, so I think there's a there's a compliment there to, to our ruck situation, um, and hopefully Tom can also impact forward as well. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking at. But yeah, th those two changes are there for me. And and you know I spoke about that Nick Newman game that we had. That that was a, that was something that Teague did. He he really he really moved the pieces around and he saw a hole there. And I don't remember if Nick Newman was on Liam Ryan or not. I could be wrong on that. But I remember he sort of exposed one of their small forwards by pushing Nick Newman up the ground. Now this week. Who knows, maybe that can work again. Maybe we can start talking about that's a Sam Petrovsky seaton opportunity or a Sam Doherty opportunity. But the one thing we've been lacking over the last few weeks, for me anyway, is the run and dash out of defense. And I spoke to Dan earlier today and, and he, he said the same thing. And we need to get some generation of, of meters gained from defense. Um, I think pretty much since the St. Kilda game, since Rats really closed it up, we haven't really got that game going. The the you know moving it from from defense to attack and whether that's because guys are out of form or whether that's because our opposition have caught on to that and have stopped that uh, that's something for me that we've got to get going this week big ground we love to run we love to get a, um, get the pressure on and, and you know score off turnover that's our game you know that's our identity uh, and that's something that I'm definitely pleased with this year that we have a game style and we have something that we're trying to do every single week. And so I'm really looking to, you know, again, to Doc, to Samo, Samo in particular, I think he's another one that I'm looking at who starting to worry a little bit. And we did the, did the mid-season review during the week on, on the show on Monday night. And I asked the question, who's been the one player that everyone is concerned about? And I think it was a, probably about 80 or 85% of the comments that were coming back um, all said that it was, it was Samo. And, you know, I know he's got it in him. I know he's good enough. Um, but we need to see a little bit more from him because he has the ability to do it. It's really as simple as that. Um, also, when you look at the Hawthorne game, so many players were just down. Um, I even look at my player ratings again, and there were so many players that were below a pass mark. So naturally, I believe they've got that resilience in them <clears throat> to respond this week and, and play better. The reason why I say that and the reason why I'm confident in that is because they've done it a few times this year. After the Melbourne loss, we did it. We responded the next week. When we had a you know a bunch of guys that were down, and the other notable one was against St Kilda. A lot of guys were just down that day. Um, the energy wasn't there, and, and they responded the week after. So we've had you know a couple of weeks where we've been good enough to get a couple of wins. You know the doggies game, um, the North game, and then in between there was was the Port game, and then we've had obviously a real down week against the Hawks. But we've got to we've got to get back on it, back on the horse, turn the form around, start a new run of form. Um, whether we win or lose, uh, this is one of those games where you probably don't expect them to win, or I don't, I should I should rephrase that. I don't expect us to win this game, um, rightly or wrongly. I just don't have that confidence that we're going to get the job done because of the, the form and all of that. But I do expect us to, at some point in this game, give West Coast a scare because it's not a young team anymore. This is a side who want to improve, want to play finals football, want to win a premiership. They're on that rise together and we have to be at least challenging these teams and, and forcing them to beat us. Very similar to how we forced you know, Port Adelaide. They had to beat us. And so that's what I'm looking at for this game. I'm looking at our leaders and I'm looking at the guys who haven't performed well this year, who should be better than what they are. And, and, and that's really what it is for me. But I'm going to turn the focus to you guys. How are you feeling in this game? Are you still reeling off the Hawthorne loss? Are you worried? Are you confident? Do you believe that we're going to have that response? Can we beat the Eagles? Do you think that there's a belief in there? A whole range of questions. Yeah, if you have any questions for me, 
put them in the comments below. And obviously these preview videos, they are sponsored this month by Brandon, who runs a company called Melbourne Coffee Roasting Co. And he's set up a code for us. So 15% off your coffee orders. And basically you go to the website in the description below, melbournecoffeeroastingco.com. Plug in the code there and you get 15% off. This week we'll be doing the, the Guernsey giveaway as well. So stay tuned for that on Sunday, the game day post. Remember, it's the first person to put the margin and the correct uh, winner in there. And you'll, there'll also be some other conditions, but wait for Sunday. I'm looking forward to it, guys. Another opportunity to watch our guys play and an opportunity to improve. See you on Sunday and go the Mighty Blues.